What happens when you take a Spider-Man figure and clash it with one of Marvel's craziest anti-heroes? You get what may be the best comic style Deadpool figure to be made. Oh, and Bob too. In this video, I'll cover everything you need to know about this wild duo, like whether it was worth reusing the Spider-Man for Deadpool, can they hit a superhero landing, and of course, who the heck is Bob and is he even worth it? What's up geeks, Kirk here, and welcome to the Geek Effect. Alright, so this pack is one I've been looking forward to unboxing for quite a while, and now that I'm finally getting around to it, I couldn't be more excited. I'm a big fan of comic style figures, especially from Marvel Legends, and Deadpool has been one of my most wanted characters to own. So when Hasbro announced this two pack for this year's San Diego Comic Con, I may have lost my mind a bit. I previously had my eyes set on their retro card release, but this new version was everything I could have wanted, offering many things I value as a collector like a well articulated body, accessories galore, and even an additional character all for a sweet price of $50. All of that for a price like this? Simply too good. These knuckleheads have been sealed in their cardboard prison since they arrived in September, so it's about time I free them. Can we just take a moment to admire this stunning box art? The front features both characters in a spotlight of a dark alley and this massive wanted poster featuring the Merc himself. On the sides, you'll find Deadpool and Bob taking their mugshots, a Deadpool logo at the top, and the flip side shows off the duo plus all of the accessories we'll get inside. I forgot how many things Hasbro threw in with this two pack, so seeing it all again has me blown away. As we can see, there's a lot to cover, so let's not waste any more time and get these figures unboxed. The first thing I want to cover with these figures is the details, starting with Deadpool. As I said, I've been desiring a comic style Deadpool for a while and this one does not disappoint. To begin with, this is a well sculpted figure and a closer examination will reveal just how great it is. The head sculpted by Hasbro's Marvel Legends team is rather impressive and looks like they ripped it directly out of his comic book. The ones where his mask is smooth all around rather than having the dangling tip at the back. He has those squinty white eyes and despite the mask basic design, bits of sculpting for the wrinkles and the nose add an extra level of detail to help it stand out. Around the neck he has a black collar but unfortunately mine seem to suffer from a bit of a QC issue where it's cut. I don't plan to mess with this piece too much so hopefully it doesn't get worse over time. The rest of Deadpool suit continues with the red and then throws in a black pattern starting at the shoulder and stopping at the thigh. I did notice a few paint mishaps the closer I looked at it but from afar it doesn't look too bad. As for the sculpting on the rest of the body they did a solid job with the arms, hands, torso and legs. The muscular details and overall size match the character with perfection. Something else I love about this figure is the several attachments Deadpool is wearing. He has a harness with katana sheaths, a utility belt, and a thigh strap with several pockets. The details of each of these pieces look amazing, especially the silver paint applications for the buckles, the sculpted pockets, and the Deadpool symbol on the belt. He also has these cuffs around his wrist and ankles, but I do wish the cuffs on his wrist were black because it would add an extra pop to the overall design. I know in some of his comic appearances, they do show him with the red on the forearm all the way to the hand, but in my eyes, adding the black wrist cuffs looks more appealing. As I said earlier, this figure utilizes the body from the Marvel Legends Renew Your Bow Spider-Man, so some of you have asked how Deadpool compares to this Spidey counterpart. Since Deadpool is a repaint of the Spidey, it features the exact scope of details except for the head, hands, and additional attachments. Not only does this mean Deadpool's sculpt is the same, but he also moves in the same way as Spidey, which I'll demonstrate later when we get into the articulation and posing. While all new bodies are exciting to see for figures, I appreciate well executed reuse and this figure is a perfect example of it done right. By the way, I haven't reviewed the Renew Your Vows 2 pack on the channel yet, so if you want to see a review of that, drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out. Next up we have Bob, Agent of Hydra. Frankly, I didn't get the 2 pack for this figure, but I'm happy to have him in my collection after messing around with it. For those of you like me who aren't familiar with this character, here's what I gathered. Bob is a former agent of Hydra turned sidekick of Deadpool who first appeared in Cable and Deadpool issue number 38. He even had a cameo in the first Deadpool film, but as one of Ajax's henchmen, since a particular studio owned the rights to Hydra. Compared to Deadpool, Bob's figure is rather basic, so there's not much to say about the details. However, I do enjoy the figure's goofy facial expression, muscle definition, and the detailed harness and belt with silver paint applied to the symbol, buckle, and buttons. As for the colors, he has the solid green and yellow colors of Hydra, and I'd say the brightness matches the appearance from the comics. Regarding the details and an accurate depiction of this duo, the Legends team did a phenomenal job, and aside from the typical scuffs here and there, what's not to love? 
Action figures require a few accessories to increase their entertainment value, and Hasbro went above and beyond with the selection for these two. With this set, we get an alternative Deadpool head, swappable hands, a briefcase, and various weapons. The alternative head was an excellent choice. The expression has a lot of personality, and the exposed damaged skin looks just as disgusting as you would expect. Deadpool comes with a trigger hand and a pointing hand out of the box, while Bob has two trigger hands. With the additional hands included though, you can give each of them a different look. Deadpool has a pair of fists, a pair of gripping hands, and a thumbs up and peace hand. As for Bob, we get a pair of fists as additional hands to throw punches with his buddy Wade. We also get this Hydra briefcase which looks quite nice. It has a good sculpt going for it, some good texturization for that leather feel, and even the print of the Hydra symbol came out looking clean. What makes me like this piece even more is the fact that you can open it up to reveal a few things. There's keys inside, a scroll, Rotten Banana, Doctor Strange's Wand of Watoom, and Bob's Hydro Flask. Wait a minute, I see what you did there, Hasbro. Hydro Flask, Hydro Flask. You son of a... Things get crazier with the weapons included. There's katanas, pistols, two more guns, a bazooka with a boxing glove, laser swords, size, nunchucks, and a bow staff. The sculpting on each piece is excellent, with the only complaint being that some of the paint on the weapons has faded, causing the plastic underneath to show through. When learning about these accessories, I discovered two fun facts. The boxing glove kinda counts as an additional hand accessory because it can be attached to any of the figure's wrist, and the katanas, size, nunchucks, and bow staff reference a well-known hero team. If you didn't notice, the handles of these weapons have specific colors that refer to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Blue grip katanas for Leonardo, red grip size for Raphael, orange grip nunchucks for Michelangelo, and bow staff with purple wraps are for Donatello. I find it awesome Hasbro included this easter egg in the pack, and I hope to see more of these types of references in future releases. The accessories we get are well matched to the characters, complementing their serious and wacky designs. And with all the various options, I don't anticipate getting bored with them anytime soon. In regards to the size, Deadpool and Bob stand a little over 6 inches, but for those of you curious, here's how they look standing next to other 112 scale action figures. Here we have Marvel Legends Renew Your Vow Spider-Man, Marvel Legends Beyond Earth's Mighty is Black Widow, Mafex Psylocke, SH Figuarts Naruto, and SH Figuarts The Amazing Spider-Man. As I teased earlier with Deadpool, this figure has some impressive range that should be able to tackle a bunch of poses, and to my surprise, Bob has some well-designed articulation too. Picking things off with Deadpool, he has some decent movement in the head, but it does need some more range when being tilted back. There's butterfly joints, shoulder rotation with a hinge for up and down movement as well as back and forth, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, wrist swivel and tilt, a diaphragm cut and ab crunch for excellent range when tilted back and forth, excellent movement in the legs plus thigh swivel, double jointed knees, and a boot swivel. Ankles pivot up and down and side to side, and then the toes pivot as well which is perfect for more natural posing. As for Bob, he features a similar articulation setup to Deadpool with a few differences. His neck is on a hinge joint thus giving him more range for looking up and down. His diaphragm is on a hinge joint giving him some nice crunch but no side movement like the diaphragm on Deadpool, but there is a waist wibble which will give him some rotation. And if you were hoping for it, unfortunately Bob did not get the toe pivot treatment. With the amount of articulation points and how they move, I could hit several poses that fit the character's styles and personalities, but a question that stood out to me the most was if they could hit a superhero landing. Well, let's give it a shot. After experiencing this crazy 2-pack, I am absolutely in love with it and so happy I finally got to experience these figures, especially after sitting in my backlog for almost 3 months. Hasbro and their Marvel Legends team killed it and it ticks several boxes on the list of things I believe make a solid action figure experience as a collector. They have superb details, a wide selection of accessories that make sense for each character, and Hasbro made some excellent articulation choices. Going with Renew Your Vow Spidey was a great decision on their part because it fits Deadpool's style so well, and I believe this could be the definitive comic Deadpool figure, at least for Marvel Legends, for quite some time. And even though I wasn't as excited for Bob, I like him way more than I thought I would. After thinking about it, I feel the $50 I spent on this pack is justified when considering everything you get out of it. These figures have sold out since their San Diego Comic Con release, so you'll have to resort to the aftermarket to get them, and at the time of this video's release, the price is floating between the $70 to $80 range. 
page. But I'd say it's still worth getting it, especially if you don't already have a comic book style Deadpool in your collection. One thing for sure is that this Deadpool is a contender for figure of the year when it comes to my 2023 list, but let me know in the comments what you think of these figures and if you plan to add them to your collection. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you all soon with more action figure goodness. Peace.